You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast, and this is show number 281 for Sunday the 13th of October 2019. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to the Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my good old friend Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there, Janie. Hello there, Michelle, and how are we on this lovely autumnal day? It's getting a bit chilly now, isn't it? It is. The old central heating's wrapped on <laughs> and the old Disney fleece is out of the wardrobe and I'm cuddling down to that every evening. And I can't believe it. it just seems somebody's like gone and flipped a switch and it's like, OK, autumn's here, right, bang, let's get on with it. Too right, my lovely. But doesn't it make you want to fill the warmth of the cockles of your heart with some delicious Disney Halloween food? Oh, well, we're not going to say no to that, are we? Everybody knows we like our Disney food. <laughs> Shall I share some with you? Oh, go on there. If it's themed to an occasion, what, what more could you want? Well, one thing that any Disney fan could not go without is Mickey-shaped foods. Agreed? <laughs> Agreed. Calorie-free, obviously, as well. Absolutely. Even if they are carbohydrate-laden, <laughs> they don't have calories and they are completely nah. acceptable on the keto Absolutely. diet. Absolutely. Yes, yes. We keep telling ourselves that anyway. How about some pumpkin spice beignets? Oh, okay. Oh. I'd love to get there at the time of year where I can dip into a bag of icing sugar goodness beignet donuty yumminess. <laughs> if you're over there in Disneyland and you're able to get to the mint julep bar, nommy nommy. But you might not want something so carbohydrate based. You might want something that might refresh and chill you a little from the autumnal Californian sunshine. Oh, OK. What, what, what's on offer? Well, this one, to me, has got every single thing that a good Disney snack has. Oh, okay. Right. It's got taste. It's got funkiness. It's got chocolate. It's got cream. It's a milkshake. Oh, okay. This is the Mini Witch Shake, and it is a mint chocolate shake topped with multicoloured sprinkles and whipped cream. It's got Oreo ears and a bright orange bow. Okay. Not one for me. I'm not a big fan of mint chalk. It tastes too much like toothpaste. I tell you something, though, love. It will definitely change the colour of your movements. <laughs> I, I think we should move on then, Michelle, to be fair. I don't think we need to be talking about the colour of our movements. Well, this is one from over at Walt Disney World. We all love a Mickey waffle. Mm-hmm. You can get a breakfast snack and it's a chocolate Mickey waffle sundae. Only available at the Halloween party. But... I think the idea of having a different coloured Mickey waffle is just a little bit zazzy. Yeah, just to brighten things up a little bit. Give yeah. it a bit of bit pizzazz. And it comes with pumpkin gelato. Oh, OK. See, I'm not an overtly big pumpkin flavour fan. So, be yeah. interesting. True. I have got one that is right up your street, though. Oh, go on, then. Darth by Chocolate. Darth by chocolate. Is there, is there a Star Wars vibe going on here? There is. It's a little clear tumbler with layers, which obviously makes it a parfait. I, I found that out the hard way. Um, okay. Basically, there's a red velvet layer. There's mm -hmm. darky chocolate mousse, light chocolate mousse. There's a bit of ganache. And then there's the wonderful Darth Vader on top with a little bit of a uh, red lightsaber in his sort of like... Half going over one eye. Oh, okay. That sounds quite cute. Yeah. But I think the number one one that I am intrigued by the most. Right. I have never had funnel fries. Funnel fries? I presume it's the same as a funnel cake, but it's instead of it being sort of wound round into a circular sort of cake shape, mm. they're just like little lines of the liquid batter and they're yeah. fried. Oh, okay. Like a chopped up cake. Yeah. And this is yeah. a decadent snack. Oh, okay. And it's basically Oogie Boogie's Worms and Dirt Funnel Fries. Oh, that, that implies lots of jelly sweets on that. There are jelly sweets. There's the little candy corn hard things that will break your tooth. <laughs> and there is green whipped cream. Oh, now that just doesn't sit well with me. Green whipped cream. That doesn't. That sounds like cream that's gone really bad. Well, it does look really bad. Oh, you're not enticing me then, Michelle. 
Yeah, I must admit, having a good look at the picture, which you can find over on our podcast website, DisneyDreamGirls.com, it does look a bit weird. <laughs> the trouble is, when they start adding food colouring to things, it, it doesn't always, always work out for the best. No. Yeah. But Disneylanders, let us know if you've tried any of these treats or if you've been to Walt Disney World and tried the treat over there. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Mm. Have you any foodie news for me, Jane? Well, it's funny you should say that, Michelle. Should I have a little bit of a theme going on here? Yeah, this is over um, Disney World this time, at the Coral Reef restaurant. They're kind of about to launch a commemorative menu to celebrate the 30th anniversary of The Little Mermaid. I didn't realise it was 30 years, which oh. makes me feel really old. God, I feel old. I know. Yeah, we'll just gloss over that little bit. Um, this is going to start on the 19th of this month, and it says it's for a limited time, but don't doesn't say how long it's going to be for. Well, let's just bear in mind what they've done with the limited time parade offerings in Disneyland. Yeah. can be anything from three weeks to five and a half years. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe we'll just take that with a pinch of sea salt, shall we? Mm. See what I did there? Sea yeah. salt? Yeah. Okay. So there's not an awful lot of details at the moment. The, the information we have says they're going to feature such things as the Dingle Hopper Shrimp Cocktail, Chef Louis Lobster Seafood Boil, and King Triton's Key Lime Tart. There's possibly just a, a case of taking some of the existing menu items and putting a bit of a twist on them, giving them a new name, whether they're going to present them differently to reflect the Little Mermaid theme or not, we don't know yet. Apparently, you will be able to take home a beautifully commemorative menu, although this will only be available while supplies last. So if you're wanting one of these, you're going to need to want to get booked in earlier on in this limited run to guarantee getting one of these menus that they're going to release. But we don't know again yet what those menus are going to look like. So, yeah, another dining experience that's being themed around a character, by all accounts. I do like the coral reef atmosphere. I think that's Mm. beautiful, and it does lend itself to this. Are we thinking another takeover like Artist Points if this goes well? Well, it'd be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Because obviously at Artist Point, I mean, you had some really good things to say about your Snow White experience. So it would be interesting to see whether or not the princesses could have their own particular place to go rather than just being grouped together at a you know a group event like Cinderella's or something like that it would seem a very logical thing to do so whether this is just a little bit of a a taster tester thing just to Mm -hmm. see whether people respond to it or not I know people who would pay good money for a meet and greet where the the star attraction would be Ursula oh crikey yeah definitely I don't see Ariel being the star of this I'm sorry I suppose it depends whether you're a goody girl or a baddie girl, doesn't it, I suppose, but... Um... Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry. How, how easy is it to meet Ariel? Yeah, true. You know, you can true. go to her attraction and then go meet her next door. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah. I mean, the good thing with Ursula is you could have... A, you know, like you had uh, over at Artist Point with that lovely backdrop for the, the Evil Queen, you could have a, an equally good stage presentation for it, couldn't you? To do oh, that completely. exclusive, you know, meet and greet. Like I can see lots of props and lots of theming because obviously it's going to be quite a stationary type character, one would imagine. Mm. So, yeah, you can I can envisage a really good meet and greet. And you say, because it's not a common meet and greet, so it, it, that would surely, to goodness, entice people to go to a restaurant that, that they perhaps might have otherwise not given a second glance to because yeah. is that is that another thing from Disney's point of view we'll throw these things at these restaurants we'll, you know whether it's a commemorative meal or a theming or a character so that the uptake of people going for these fine dining experiences is continued because like you said about artist point there was quite a quick turnover to get people through mm. so they obviously do work for the general public in, in that enticement aspect oh, absolutely I, I can see it now you've got ursula with her set piece ariel yeah. and prince eric wander around for pictures and maybe under a silver cloche they bring out sebastian <laughs> they had a ratatouille rat they did i do i'm not sure you know what i'm just thinking if they're, they're actually offering aren't they a lobster boil 
<laughs> um, you can't, can you, really? Oh, you can. It'd be such good fun. Hurry, Sebastian, they're going to put you in the part. I, sw- I suppose the good thing is that at least they haven't called it Sebastian's Lobster Boil, because that would have been really be not very mean. nice, would it? No, not really. <laughs> I can see them going a lot more down this route because I can see a price point of $65 and it will sell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could so. even get King Triton in there, couldn't you? You could have like a, and again, like another staging area sort of thing. You could choose to go one way or the other. It's, it's Yeah, I think the more you talk about it, the more possibilities oh. that you can see with this and other restaurants adopting other characters down the line. I don't like the idea of meeting a topless old man, though. Yeah, but he's not topless, is he? Because he has that foam thing on. It's mm. not proper. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's <laughs> me. I don't know. But, yeah. But I do know, coming up very, very shortly, we have a mm. little bit of a chat with the, the lovely Tiffany and her children, Daniel and Abigail, because they want to talk a little bit about some of the things they like to do in Walt Disney World and also Tiffany wants to share a little bit about her trip when she went to visit Galaxy's Edge so why don't we hear from them now and then we'll come back for our main feature at the end okay okay where dreams begin well hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girl feature and I have not one not two but three superstar guests to join us guys do you want to introduce yourselves I am Tiffany Morse with Wishes Family Travel. I also have my children here, Abigail. Daniel. Woo! Hi, guys. Hello. 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 Some of you will recognize Daniel and Tiffany before because they've both been on the show before, but this is Abigail's first time. So welcome to the Disney Dream Girls, Abigail. Thank you. You guys have been preparing a list for me and... I, it's a surprise because I've no idea what's on this list. Who'd like to go first and tell me about what you've created for me? I would like to go first. Go on then. So for my first one, I chose Be Our Guest because I just love the scenery in there. It feels like you just walked into the movie. Ooh, so you're, you're going to share some places you like to eat with me? Yes, ma'am. Do you prefer breakfast, lunch or dinner? Mm, well, I've only been at the Be Our Guest for lunch, for as far as I can remember, so lunch. Okay, can I ask you a question, Abigail? Of course. Do you like snails? No, ma'am. <laughs> and I, I'd, I'd stay away from the evening dinner then, because they do serve snails if you ask for them. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've traumatised Abigail already. She's only suggested one place. I do agree you've chosen a beautiful place to go and have lunch. We love Be Our Guest for lunch, and they are also very allergy-friendly. Daniel has a peanut allergy, so... i got to eat cupcakes. They are very good at Be Our Guest at handling guests who have got food intolerances or allergies because the chef will come out and talk to you and help you with your menu choice and things. What's your favourite main meal there, guys? Why do you ask such hard questions? <laughs> what do you guys usually get there? The sandwiches? They usually yes. get the they turkey They have great sandwich. sandwiches. Yes, they do. I was mostly stuck on the scenery, though. <laughs> so do you prefer the creepier side in the West Wing, the ballroom, or the sort of like music box room? Um, Probably the ballroom is my favourite. It's so pretty. What about you, Daniel? Which is your favourite room? The um, West Wing, because I'm not supposed to be there. (laughs) A little bit of spooky side coming out. That's fabulous. What's next on your list then, Abigail? The Rainforest Cafe. Ooh, so why do you like eating there? Well, the food is absolutely delicious. And I love that it feels like you're in the rainforest and in the jungle and they have a really, really good gift shop. That's true, they do. Have you ever been there for your birthday? No, ma'am, I have not. I have been to Disney around my birthday, but not. I have not been at the Rainforest Cafe on my birthday. Well, next time you go, tell them it's your birthday. They'll understand if it's not quite your birthday. The whole restaurant turns around and starts singing to you, and it's such good fun. <laughs> I will do that. Everyone else in the restaurant hates it, but the kids absolutely love it. Yeah. 
I remember spending Bryony and Emily's, I think it would have been their 13th birthday there. And with them being twins, they sang it first to Emily and then they sang it next for Bryony. And they got a big cake with lots of sparklers in it and they had a fantastic birthday. So basically Aww. all the Disney magic back in dough. Absolutely. So what's next on the list for us, Abigail? The Pinocchio house. Just several, there's, There was this one time when we went to Disney World and we had no idea where to eat for lunch. And we went to the Pinocchio house and we tried some of the food and it was really, really good. So Pinocchio's house just really saved us. And we've gone there ever since. We always try to go there. Pinocchio's house was really good. They have really good food, great theming. They have some really good ice water. Cool. I can uh, definitely agree with that if you're wanting something quick. Have you ever gone upstairs to watch into It's a Small World? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I have. We, we did. We took the signs on the table and we held them up for the people and they interacted with us. The people actually on It's a Small World. So that's yeah. always fun. Fantastic. So we've had one, two and three. What's number four? The Coral Reef at Epcot. Ooh, nice pick. Why did you choose that? Well, I ever since I was really little, I always love animals, and I love the aquarium. So I really love. That's why I really love the coral reef, and it's ne right next to Nemo, so it's easy to get to there. And the food is really good. They also handle allergies really well too. So you like a lot of seafood. Yes, ma'am. I, I like shrimp. Oh, who doesn't like shrimp? Apparently, my sister. <laughs> I'm more into the fish than the shrimp. Well, that's good. They do a little bit for everybody. Where are you taking us mm -hmm. next? Mamma Mia's um, at Hollywood Studios. Ooh. So what's good there? Well, it's an Italian restaurant, and I absolutely adore Italian food. I mean, I love the pizza. I love pizza. I love breadsticks. I love pasta. I just love... And I love that um, they hang up... Actress, actors and actresses that's been there. That sounds a lot of fun. It is. So, what's next? Oh, uh, that's it. That's number five. Wow, we've gone through that list so quickly. I am a little surprised there was no mention of really big desserts or ice cream. Is that something you're not a fan of? No. No, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's move over to Daniel and see what his list is like. Number five. Mickey's Backyard Barbecue, mostly for the great show and the great food. You like dancing with the characters? I didn't get up and dance, but I love seeing Mickey and his little chaps dancing up on the stage. There's a really good whip show. Also, I, I love BBQ. And we can't forget, you're saying about desserts, mm -hmm. the Mickey Ice Creams. Yes! <laughs> it sounds to me that, Daniel, you might have had one or two of them in your life. Yeah, maybe a few. He had his first Mickey ice cream at nine months. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. That's so cute. Okay, are we going in with number four then? Number four isn't around what it used to be. Pizza Planet. Ooh. Pizza Planet. Uh, what was great about Pizza Planet is the great selections of pizza. There's almost every kind of pizza. We love Toy Story 1, 2, and 3. They're even scary. Hmm. It was great theming. We loved pizza. There was things like little arcade machines with the claw and the... The claw! <laughs> Just overall great food. If you want to get pizza, you went to Pizza Planet. So do you think you'd give out a try to Pizza Rizzo, which is in its place, really? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I we'll have to have a report back from you to compare the two when you've been. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's hop to number three. Number three. The Finding Nemo restaurant. I don't really know what this one's called. The Coral, coral Reef. <laughs> yeah, we both love the Coral Reef. I really love shrimp, but that's always why I get there. The chef's really good about... The chefs there are really good about allergies. Mm -hmm. I love the food and the desserts there. The, the desserts are great. Also, well, the theming, it's great. Looks like a normal table, except there's a giant fish tank with little fish that look like Nemo and Dory. It's so cool, isn't it? I know, I just love eating food while I'm looking at the fish. <laughs> it's like there's no shrimp in that fish tank. 
Good point. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, can I go pick which shrimp I'm going to have next? Yeah. Okay, we're down to number two. Be our guest, be our guest, put our service to the test. <laughs> Seriously, there's, it's a great restaurant. You go into the, well, sort of haunted castle by Beast. Mm-hmm. It's great theming. Food's great. I, I, I love their chicken. Great mm. theming. We went, there was a bunch of snow, but there was Christmas trees and fake snow falling, which the thing was, you were completely surrounded, so it didn't even feel like fake snow. And the Christmas tree was from almost from the bottom of the floor up to the ceiling. Wow. It was a magical time. Oh, that sounds lovely. And the desserts. Oh, the desserts. <laughs> okay, so your top place, place to eat then. What is Lunchbox? Ooh. In Hollywood Studios. So what do you like from there? I love me some potato barrels. Ah, we don't really have them in the UK. Oh, oh. you're missing out. We're sorry. We're sorry, yeah. When we go over, I'll literally eat like two cups of potato barrels. Potato barrels are just, um, help me, help me They're out. like tater tots. But I don't know. I mean, I know that she knows what they are from being in Disney. But mm. if they don't have them, we have tater tots a lot here. But for some reason, they just taste so much better at Disney World. Yeah. Also, they make really, really good grilled cheese. And the theming. The benches that you wait on are tiny little Lincoln logs. It's so cute. The umbrellas are sticks with those little plastic sh- um, umbrellas on the top. Then the chairs are like little wooden little baby bells and tiny one beach chairs. And it's just really cool because you're so tiny and everything else is so big. You see that giant Lincoln log and you're like, whoa, I used to play with these. (laughs) Oh, it sounds like you've had a lot of fun times testing all these places out in Walt Disney World. Yes, we definitely have. Yes, we have. So I'm going to put you on the spot now because I haven't asked you this question. Is there anywhere you don't like to eat in Walt Disney World? Again with those hard questions. Yeah. I'm looking and I'm thinking, uh, is there anywhere that you guys are like, mm, no? Uh, you guys really hard questions. Um, I can't really honestly think of anywhere that we're kind of like, uh, no. Um, well, Backlot Express and Hollywood Studios. Um, I think that's yeah. on the no more list for a while. Mm. Hollywood mm. Studios is really great, just more on the rides and less on the... Yeah. No. no. I'd agree with you there. Well, guys, that was fabulous. Thank you so much. I think next time we have you both on, perhaps you could do a list of things that you'd recommend for children to do. So some attractions or some shows or things. Absolutely. Rock and roll, Custer. Woo! (laughs) So let's speak with mum now. Tiffany, I know you've been back and forth to Walt Disney World since we last spoke a few times. I have, I have. So would you like to share a little bit about what you've been doing, where you've been travelling and what you've done? The last trip was down in August for the opening of Galaxy's Edge. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I I have to preface that. Um, So I had big expectations. I am a Star Wars nerd. I was born the year that um, The New Hope premiered, 1977, and so it's a special thing in our family. Um, My dad and I grew up watching them together, and then as I got married, my husband and I watched them together, and we had the kids. The kids watched them with us, so now as the new ones come out, that's what we'll do Like for Christmas for my dad. We give him a night at the movies. It's, It's a family affair when a new one comes out. But Galaxy's Edge was absolutely amazing. We got there, uh, got up at 3.30 in the morning. I think that's the earliest I've ever gotten up to go to a park, but it was totally worth it. We were in line by about 4.30. So the first day they held us till about 5, and then we started walking back. So it's towards the back of the park, beyond Toy Story Land is kind of the way that they, the way they took us that day at least. And so you walk in and you walk under through this huge, it's almost like a rock cave. And so that kind of signals to you, okay, something's changing, something's different. Um, And then you walk into the marketplace, 
which is it has shops and quick service lined up on both sides. And we were there opening morning, so it was wall to wall people. I mean, it was it was really crazy. <laughs> it was really crazy, but it was great. It was absolutely amazing. Was there really good atmosphere with between everyone who was in line with you? There was kindness. I would say there was definitely kindness in between everybody. Um, we actually went back the next morning, and there was a much better atmosphere, a much different atmosphere. I think the first morning, um, everyone was just so focused on trying to get in that there wasn't as much of that. Mm -hmm. Next morning, um, I went with some other ladies from our agency the next morning, and we went back, and we got coffee, and we were waiting, and about... 5.45, we're waiting on the main Hollywood Boulevard right there. And all of a sudden, the Star Wars music, the Stormtrooper, the Imperial March starts playing. And all of us look and we're like, what's that? Okay, that was new. That didn't happen the day before. And we are surrounded. We look up and we are surrounded by Stormtroopers, literally. They were all around the crowd. And the Stormtroopers marched us in. And right as we went under the rock cave, there was a silent gasp, like you could just hear people gasping, and nobody spoke, which was crazy, because there were all these people there, and then as we went under that arch, there was massive cheering and screaming and yelling, and I mean, it was great, so I think the atmosphere was honestly better the second day, mm -hmm. and the second morning, we got to ride the Millennium Falcon. So I got to do that twice. I was the engineer once and the gunner once, and you have different positions. So there's three different positions. You can either be the pilot um, that controls the direction of the ship, mm -hmm. tilt of the ship. The engineer controls how quickly the ship is repaired. Um, if you get hit and you fail to repair your ship, you will get blasted and you get shaken quite a bit. Um, and then there's the gunner and, of course, you know, blasting the um, the bad guys there. The TIE fighters. So it was a lot of fun. That was an incredible experience all on its own. That was totally worth waiting for. I've wanted to do that since I was five years old. Oh, my word. Yes. So being able to walk through that queue line. And the queue line is like the docking bay for the ship. Um, and, of course, you know, it's the Millennium Falcon, so you're smuggling things. There's that kind of going on. Um, you get to sit at the famous chess table where the chess game takes place, and you can do photo ops there. And then they pair you together. There's six people, two for each position. So both times there were two of us riding because one of us had a baby so we did rider swap, and mm -hmm. the rider really well. As soon as we came out, the um, the lady with the baby and I got to go back in, and they just took us right through the what I'm guessing will be the fast pass line eventually. It's not the fast pass line at the moment, but they took us through the secret line, and we walked almost right on again to ride again. But the graphics, the experience, it's just. It is incredible. It's the best one Disney has ever done. Wow. I love it. Did you manage to go and take in some food while you was in Galaxy's Edge? I did. So the first day we were there, we had a reservation, and we got to go in the famed Olga's Cantina. Uh, reservations are highly, highly recommended. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I will say is when you're waiting in line, they call you up a group at a time, and there's this huge door that – it's shut, and it looks like, I mean, it looks like something off of a spaceship. That's the only way to describe it. And finally, when you get up to the door, there's a cast member that goes in with you, and they stand on the mat, and the mat will open the door for you. And then it goes shut immediately. So, I mean, I mean, I guess it can sense when you're standing on the mat or not if there's somebody there. The atmosphere inside Olga's Cantina is very, very, very much the um, the atmosphere that's in the movies. It's got the crazy creatures playing crazy music. There's so many things to look at everywhere. They um, have DJ Rex in there, which is nice. That was a nice nod um, to Star Tours, which we appreciated. That was a fun. And then um, we stood at the bar. The cast member takes you either to a table or at the bar. 
there is 90%, it's 90% standing room only. Wow. So, yes. So if you have, you know, elderly people that absolutely cannot stand, that might be something to consider. We each tried different drinks. And they were very interesting, some alcoholic, some non-alcoholic. There's a two-drink maximum there, and there's a 45-minute um, time limit on your time in the cantina. So after 45 minutes, because that was my question, I'm like, okay, so what happens at 45 minutes? <laughs> the cast members do kind of start to try and escort you out, get you to finish up so that they can get the next group in there. So one of the really cool experiences in the cantina, though, was the second day we went back to the cantina and just walking in there, um, we were standing there and Finn walks up to us and he's like, have you seen these droids? So the characters are extremely interactive and they're walking around. Very cool. It was very cool. It was very, very cool. And the atmosphere, the way that you can play with the app and how that interacts with your experience with the cast members is really amazing. It's very immersive. It's very interactive. And you can be as involved or uninvolved as you want. So if you have people that are not really into Star Wars, they're just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to ride the ride or to um, see it, that's fine. And then if you have people that are very excited about Star Wars, Ooh. they can get more involved. Yes. My kids love Star Wars. Woo, Star Wars! <laughs> <laughs> so when's your next trip planned? So my next trip is November, the first week of November, going on Disney Cruise with our agency. would like to try and get the kids down within the next year, probably, or so, to do Galaxy's Edge, because they really wanted to go with me, and they were a little um, upset that I went without them this time. <laughs> So well, I'd like to do that. For can't do it every single time because it's, you know, it's expensive and time away from home and school and whatever. Absolutely, it is. And then it gives them something to look forward to, too. There's always something new going on or opening, which is really nice. There is so many new restaurants and hotels and give it till 2021 and there'll be a whole new set of, attractions to ride and i'm sure daniel you will be beating me in line to go on the tron coaster yes ma'am yeah i i know because you like your fast roller coasters and my friends cat and lewis have said this is amazing because they've ridden it in the overseas parks and they said it was fantastic lucky i know they're very lucky one day we'll all get to the overseas parks too i think that would be amazing i love listening to them and listening to their adventures Yes, they're coming over to Paris next <gasps> May. So we're having a little bit of a meet-up in Paris. So it's all very exciting. That's exciting. That'll be a fun trip to hear about. It will. It will because they're doing the transatlantic from Miami to Barcelona. So they'll be on wow. um, a Disney ship for quite a long period of time as well. So they're very excited. That would be an amazing experience in itself. That would be fun. I know. If only I wasn't a school teacher, I would be on that boat with them. <laughs> oh, I understand that. Well, there are children to be educated, so I've got to be there. Absolutely, and they are so lucky to have you. Oh, you're very sweet. So your cruise, where are you heading off to on that one? What's the destination? The destination is actually um, the Bahamas. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, it's fine. It's intact. Everything is fine down there. They were very blessed um, that that particular part of the island was not hit mm. with the hurricane. Yeah, I had some friends who recently visited Castaway Key, and they explained that it wasn't quite what they were used to, but it's it's getting there. The people over there are working really, really hard to restore everything, get people back on track in their homes as well. Definitely. And they have been working very hard on that. Yeah, which is good. Absolutely. Yes. Well, my lovely, can you give yourself a bit of a shout out where people can hear and find out more about you and follow on in your trips? And maybe if they want to get in touch with you to help with you to help them book some travel. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So I am Tiffany Morse and I work with Wishes Family Travel. 
I'm a vacation experience architect, so we plan and build our clients' dream vacations. My services are absolutely free, and I would love to talk to you, whether you are uh, in the U.S. or across the pond. Would love to help you with your trips, and you can reach me um, on Facebook, which is Family Travel Dash Tiffany Morse M O R S E, or you can email at Tiff T I F M is in Mickey at wishesfamilytravel dot com, or if you prefer the phone. Six seven eight seven seven zero four one four four. Thank you so much. You are very welcome, my lovely, and I can't wait to chat with you again. Maybe after you've done that cruise, so we can have a little bit of cruise line chat. That would be lovely. Then it gives Daniel and Abigail a chance to write me a list about things that they can talk about about their favorite attractions. Absolutely, they would love to do that. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. <laughs> awesome. Right, well, thank you so much for being our guest this week, guys. And I'll look forward to talking to you real, real soon. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Where dreams begin. So what did you think to that then? Abigail and Daniel, aren't they amazing? Fabulous. You've done a great job there, Tiffany. Lovely children. I hope one day our paths will cross. Oh, that'd be nice, yeah. Would. and it was just by pure coincidence they were talking about the coral reef and we just happened to have a feature about it it's like worlds colliding isn't it it is and the thing that i'd like to bring to the table to finish off to finish off this week's show mm. is food related again i'm afraid sorry guys <laughs> it's just one of those shows isn't it yeah well i'm trying to work my way through some of the places and things that I enjoyed on my last recent Walt Disney World trip. Mm. And I thought about, well, Ohana. Okay. You've always liked Ohana. Well, it's a place I've tried to get a dining reservation for. It's incredibly difficult to get into. Mm. But I'm changing my opinion, Jane. And I'm I'm preparing myself for the hate mail here. Uh Uh-oh. Why? What happened or didn't happen or... Well... Let me just say, it depends how you're playing for Ohana to whether you should book it, in my opinion. Right, okay. And I'm talking about the dinner. Right. So, it's at the Polynesian Resort in the Great Ceremonial House, the second floor. Mm -hmm. Dinner starts from 3.30 and works through till 10. Okay. Including tax... It can cost up to $55.38 for an adult. Right. Or a dining plan dinner credit. Mm Mm-hmm. If you're on the dining plan for one credit, I think it's fantastic value. Right, okay. But? For me personally, Mm. I no longer see $55 worth of food being consumed by me. Right, so is this just just you personally, Michelle? Well, I think... I'm going to give our listeners a way of having the best of Ohana without paying that. Because when you add a tip onto that as well, you're looking at what? Say, let's just round it up to 20%. Mm. Okay. So you're going to be looking at adding another $10 on that. Yeah. That's about $65 a person. And that's Mm. all. You've got to, for me, get a lot of value for that. Yeah, definitely. Now, unless you can eat your body weight in shrimp, sweet and sour chicken and says one sirloin steak then <laughs> it is going to be overpriced but let me start at the beginning and go through the menu right okay so as soon as you arrive you're greeted escorted to your table and you walk past the servery where they have the pineapple coconut bread and there's the big open grill and they seat you yeah and they greet you with the ohana pineapple coconut bread which is delicious mm. I remember from a few years ago, I did not try it this trip because I I had vowed off bread. Right. So for me, I didn't get that. But none of the people on our table got it because we were with Tom, who has an allergy. Okay. He's allergic to shrimp. So we had to wait for the chef to come over and go through the menu and prepare food for us that was going to be 100% allergy friendly for his shrimp allergy because they use grills don't they 
They do indeed, yes. You don't want any cross-contamination. Exactly. And to be honest, the chef was very insistent and very keen to show us that they would use different skewers for the beef and make sure it was going to be grilled on a different grill so that there was no Uh cross-contamination for the grill that was previously used for shrimp, having his steak on it, etc. So that was brilliant. So we eventually got our coconut bread and then they came with a mixed green salad with the lovely dressing on top. It was really flavoursome, beautiful salad. And if you want more salad, they will bring you more salad. Very generous of them. And virtually at the same time, we got a big sampler, like a bit, it looked a bit like a smaller upturned dustbin lid. Okay. And it had some pork dumplings, which had a garlic ginger sauce and some honey coriander chicken wings. Mm. We had some noodles, some stir-fry vegetables. Right. And they brought some dipping sauces, and oh my word, they had the most amazing peanut sauce and a sweet and sour sauce. They were divine. I could have Mm. literally eaten my body weight of the peanut (laughs) sauce. Right. Absolutely delightful. And if at any point you wanted more dumplings or anything like that, they'd bring you them. Yeah. Then it comes on to the skewers, and they used to, years gone by, offer pork as well, but pork's now gone. It's sweet and sour chicken, the shrimp, and the steak. Right. And you can sort of say, oh, have you got any that's well done? Have you got any that's a bit underdone, a bit more rare? And they will quite Mm. happily accommodate you. Yeah. Now, remember me saying that Tom had a shrimp allergy? Mm. They kept bringing him shrimp. Ah. And it... It did get a little bit annoying. No, I've got an allergy. Oh, very sorry, sir. But it did get annoying. Um, The food, very flavoursome, fresh, warm, hot, as much as you wanted. Mm. But again, I've tried to reduce the amount I eat. Mm. Dessert, at this point, we were basically in a meat and shrimp coma. (laughs) But they did bring the most delicious Ahana bread pudding with a caramel sauce at with bananas as well, and a big Mm. lump of vanilla ice cream, which was amazing. Does sound nice. And if you wanted more, you could get more. Oh, okay. So if you have a good appetite, you could pretty much take it to Disney and get your 55 or $65 worth. Yeah. For me personally, I couldn't. I try to eat a smaller portions of food and... But there is a way where you can get the best of Ohana without paying $65 a person. Okay, and how would that go? Right next door to Ohana, there's the Tambu Lounge. Uh Aha, yeah. And in the Tambu Lounge, you can have appetisers. Ah, the same sorts of things that you've just described, I'm guessing, Michelle. Well, pretty much. Their appetizer menu is they have a tambu mixed grill kebab. Right. So if you didn't want to have as much, you could say, well, can I have a whole chicken one or a whole shrimp one or a whole steak one? And it comes with that peanut sauce. Ah. $13. Okay. And then you could turn around to them and say, can I have the bread pudding? Ooh. And it's about 8 $9. Right. So basically for me, I could have the same experience for about $20. I was just going to say, it's like like actually having like a pay-as-you-go meal, isn't it? Rather than having to feel that you're, you're almost obliged to overeat just to get your money's worth. Yeah. And on top of that, I can also have a Lapu Lapu, which is a signature drink for the particular eatery. Mm. And that's $15.50. So you're actually able to spend... More wisely and, and more more towards what you actually want rather than having to have things because it's part of the deal. Yeah, spend yeah. less, eat wisely, get the same experience and the lounge, you don't have to book six months in advance, you just turn up. Yeah. So top tip. So double, double win really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely, some, yeah. Some top tips there, if you want to try out the food of Ohana, don't want to pay out all that money, can't get an ADR, Go to the lounge, you know, get a few of the different starters that they offer or a selection of the skewers, get the dessert, your quid's in. Mm. 
so I just thought I'd share that with you. My friend Tommy, his wife Lena, they ate with us and they would heartily recommend going back again. They've never been there before and they loved it. Mm. Absolutely loved it. They would not hear a bad thing against it. And to be honest, the quality of the food I was happy with. Yeah. The quantity I was happy with. But just for me personally, there was it just wasn't value. Yeah, you know, I think this is the thing, though, Shell, isn't it? It's it's doing like we've always said. You do a little bit of research before you go, listen to podcasts like this, and find out these little little workarounds and what have you, and then make your decisions as to whether or not it's the right thing for you to do. If you're on a dining plan, it may not be such a big bigger deal, but if you're having to pay for it out of pocket, then yeah, you're going to want to think twice twice about it, aren't you? And if, say mm. if you can eat that amount, then all power to you. But like you and I, perhaps when we wouldn't be. It does put that question mark over the value aspect, doesn't it? Mm. One final point. Mm. We were only in the restaurant 70 minutes. Oh, okay, that's uh, pretty sharpish. If you want a leisurely slow meal, this probably might not be a place for you. Mm. Unless you head up your waiter, but they need to turn those tables they need people in and out because it's that cash register of Disney's going ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching because every bottom on a chair is giving them $55-ish. Yeah, and that's what we said, we said before, isn't it? That element of sometimes you're on the conveyor belt of getting people in and out. Mm, absolutely. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this week's show. Mm-hmm. I hope you've all enjoyed listening in to the fabulous interview we had earlier with Tiffany and Daniel and Abigail. They will be back. They did a fantastic job. Jane and I did a little bit of foodie talk. Next week we'll be doing something a bit special because we might be recording in person. Oh, yeah. Mm, forgot about that. Ah, you see, I, I, it's all up there, Jane. It's all up there. <laughs> so, my lovelies, until we meet you again, don't forget you can tweet us, Instagram us, at Girls. You can email info at DisneyDreamGirls.com. You can find some lovely pictures to go with all the things we've talked about this evening on DisneyDreamGirls.com. And if you'd like to improve and review or even just leave us for the first time an iTunes review, we would be really grateful. So pop on iTunes and write a review. it make us smile. Yay! But until next week, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me.